All right, so now, now that we have the local setup, let's start writing the contract, okay? Let me create another terminal. Actually, you know what? Let me just move this outside. So we don't, we need the full screen real estate to just, you know, coding. So let me create another terminal outside. And here we can go to this shop. Uh, what was it? Twitter. And inside that we go to contract. Here I can run npx hard hat node yeah so this is my ethereum node let me confirm that it's working yeah so it is connected to 8545 now i will create another window and here i will go to stop twitter again contract but in this case i will just run npx hard hat compile right and i'll run npx hard hat test perfect so everything is good right now we'll keep the node running in one terminal and we can use the other terminal without distracting us in the code because screen is small and i've increased the font size so i thought it would make sense to keep them in a separate window this will help us with development easily right so now uh, let's look at the contract so this is the default contract that they gave us. We can just repurpose this. Actually, let's just start a new file. Let me just copy the header because we're going to use the same. So I'll create a new file called Twitter.sol. I'll paste the header. So basically, this is just uh, that we don't, we are currently unlicensed. And I'll just use this comment. I think it's just, otherwise it just gives us a warning that before deploying a contract to the mainnet, you need to have a license that you put there. Right now it's unlicensed because we are just, it's a side project. And we, so Pragma Solidity 0.8.4 tells the compiler that this is the Solidity version or like greater than this is what we are going to use. Import hard hat console.sol because we're gonna use console.log inside of uh, Solidity to, to check that everything that we're doing works fine, right? So now what we're gonna do is um, we can run. So basically we need to initialize a contract. So this is how so a contract is like a class, right? Look, it already gives me <laughs> a lot of these things. Let's see what it gives me. Uh, so yeah, I have GitHub Copilot and this is the kind of things that it does. It tells me a, a struct tweet and a mapping of address to tweet or something. Um, look, it already gave me a bunch of things, but it wouldn't work. We'll look at it later. Right now, we are not starting with this. I'll keep this aside. Let's just assume that's non-existent, right? And uh, I'm going to actually just start off with creating a simple string name, right? So why am I doing this is we are getting used to Solidity. So this is just Solidity 101. Actually, let's open the Solidity documentation here, right? So if you go to Solidity Lang docs, we can, so basically when I start learning a programming language, I quickly read through its documentation to learn what do they have. You can see layout of a Solidity file. I already told you that we need to have a license identifier and like Pragma and all these things. After this, you can read about structure of a contract. It'll tell you that contract has some storage and like state variables, functions, function modifiers, events. It's very helpful to actually read through this documentation and it will just give you a basic idea of what Solidity offers, right? So you can read through this, you can spend some time on Solidity Lang website and you can look at the data types, which is the most important part. So the data types, again, Solidity is a statically typed language, right? So it's not like JavaScript where you can, JavaScript is dynamically typed. So you can, in JavaScript, in theory, you could do something like uh, let name, right? And you can do let name equal to Abhi, or you can do let name equal to one. So, but the name is not typed by default, right? But in Solidity, we need to define the type of the name. This is similar to other statically typed languages like Java or C or something. So if you look at the types, it has a bool type, which can be true or false. It has like, you can do logical operators, integers. So you can see that there's a 
signed integer and unsigned integer type which means that in the signed integer you can have negative numbers so minus one minus two and all this u int is unsigned so it it can basically the memory that can be allocated by the number is the same right so in terms of integer half of them will be positive integers and half of them are taken by negative integers but in terms of unsigned integer like you can imagine that all the numbers that are that exist in the negative side and the positive side are only on the positive side because there's no sign so you can create a larger range of numbers by using the uint type right so if you read what they're saying keywords uint 8 to uint 256 in steps of 8 so if you take int 8 for example 2 power 8 is um, so basically the number of numbers that can be actually allocated memory is 2 power 8 right so 2 power 8 would be let's say 2 square is 4 2, pa 2 cube is 8 2 power 4 is 16 2 power 5 is 32 2 power 6 is 64 2 power 7 is 128 2 power 8 is 256. So in theory, for an 8 bit, which is one byte number, you can store up to 256, but that is uint, right? So if you store un unsigned integers, you can store from uh, 0 to 256, let's say, right? But if you use integer type, where there half of them will be in the negative side. So you can store from minus 128 to plus 128. Let, let's confirm this. Uh, you can do something like um, int 8 range. So it'll give you that, yeah, int eight is one byte and you can go from minus 128 to 127. And if you do unsigned, you can go from zero to 255. So yeah, so like I said, there are 256 uh, spaces in memory, in, in, in the computer memory that you can use. So if you use the unsigned number, you can go, you have a bigger range. If you use a signed number, you have a smaller range. And similarly, if you look at the last one, which is the upper end limit, which is int 256. So, in, uh, so by default, it is 256. And this 256 bits integer can take, let's look at this. Yeah, some like billions, like very huge numbers basically, right? So uh, I don't know the exact uh, range, but it's, it's you can assume that if in, in, eight, in eight bits you can store up to 256, then in 256 bits you can store, right? Uh, 0 to 2 power 256 minus 1, right? So that two power n minus one is the total is the maximum number that you can store. So if you will be storing large numbers, you can use larger data types. If you just need smaller numbers, you can use int eight or something like this. So that's why you can use by default int means that it's a 256 number, right? So you can use int data type, you can use uh, bit operations, you can do all these operators, modulus operation, exponentiation. So these are the data types. We can do a quick reading, but uh, I'll let you do that on your own time. Here, what I'm just trying to do is I'm, I'm taking a string, which is called name. I'm just trying to demonstrate how this works, right? And we can write a function uh, get name, right? And that function, what it will do is it will uh, return the name, right? So if you look here, now get name is the function, public is the visibility type, right? So this string uh, name, I want it to be uh, publicly visible. I can assign public here also. Right. And then it will give me a default getter for name. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm doing a get name function. So I don't let me not put public here for now. Let's just use a get name function, which is public. And it's a view, which means that it doesn't change anything in the contract storage. It just returns the value and it, it returns a string value, which is name, right? So this is my get name function. And let's also write a set name function, right? So if you write the set name function, you will pass it a string name which actually needs to be from memory. So uh, we need to write uh, memory here because actually let's, uh, let's not write it. Let, let's run through the errors and then figure it out, right? So it's a public function again, and it is it returns the, it sets the value of this name, which is in the contract storage to underscore name, right? So now I have the name function and I have the get name and uh, name variable and I have get name and set name functions. So what we'll do at this moment is we will compile this, right? So let me go back to my terminal and do npx hard hat compile. It will give me some errors, I think, or yeah. So look, uh, the name get name returns a string. This should come from memory and the function set name also uh, takes an argument name and it should be set in memory. So the difference is that if you read the solidity, do uh, solidity documentation, you will figure out that this is the contract storage so this is something that the contract keeps in a storage space this is permanent 
but the the variable that we use inside the functions we need to declare explicitly if it's the one that is in the contract storage or if it's going to be in memory right so for the this one i can add memory here and what this will do is it it tells solidity that this variable is temporarily allocated memory during the execution of this program so this is runtime memory right so and even here when i'm returning the string it should be in memory so i'll just add memory here now this warning should go away it's it's not even a warning it's an it's a type error right so um, if i run compile again yeah so look compilation fell uh, was successful so we have compiled this contract uh, let's get rid of this greeter contract we don't need it anymore right and let's go to a test file and we'll just repurpose this test file right like because we have deleted greeter so we'll make this greeter should return the name for now right should return the name and this is greater await ethers dot get contract factory greater, right so that it will it will return this contract and then we will notice the casing right this is the greater cap with capital d that's the contract factory and this is the instance of that contract factory so i'll do twitter dot deploy right now we don't need any argument right and we can await that it's getting deployed so when you await something which means it's getting mined right because the nodes in the network need to mine this transaction now we can expect greeter there's no greet function there's a get name function and we'll expect it to equal empty string because right now we haven't set anything now we will set name here and set name um, let me call this in this format and i'll do uh, i should have just written it from scratch but anyway it's fine um, basically what we're doing here is we are going to repurpose the same test file so that we can test the contract and then again we will wait and then we will do twitter dot get name which equals a b All right so we just wrote a basic test and we just repurpose the test that they gave us and let me run this test look so it, it it logged twitter and it says that it should return the name and it was passing successfully which means that first it returned an empty string and then we set it to a b and then it returned a b right so this is what we wanted to test and let's actually rename this to data test dot js right so this is how you write a test we can test everything we can initialize this right so to initialize this we can run a constructor and we can say actually let me i, I want to take an argument yeah. i'll take an a string argument which is going to be memory underscore name and I'll say name equals name, right? So this is my constructor function. It is similar to set name function, but it will take the first, it will, it is run when the contract is deployed. So here, when we are deploying that contract, deploy, we can pass the initial name, right? So I'll pass Abhi and at that point, the test will fail because now I have initialized name to Abhi, but I'm testing that it's equal to empty string. So let's do this. Let me save this. I should have compiled before this, but it automatically compiles if you run test. So like um, visibility for constructors ignored, but anyway, uh, that's a warning. Let's look here, right? Should return name and it failed because I was expecting a B to equal to empty string, right? So I uh, so like I said, in the constructor, I'm initializing the name to a B, but here I'm expecting that it's empty string. So here I know that this is a B and when we are trying we are testing the set function we can set it to something like ab tube and then we will compare that it got set to ab tube right so now let me just run the test again as you see it can return the name correctly and the test pass because now we are using the constructor to initialize the first name you can also initialize the name here directly like you can call this as abhi and then you don't need this constructor that will also work Let's, let's just do that. And then you don't pass anything to the constructor.
it compiled because I changed the contract and it should return the name. It still works, right? Because I can initialize the contract. And the next thing is I can make this string public. Now I don't even need, need this get name function, right? It'll be a name function on which will be exposed because it solidity creates the getter default for you. So let's just rename this to uh, name. All right. So instead of get name, we are using name and let's try this. Look, it still works, right? What I did is here, I just made this public name and this is the name of my variable. So the contract will automatically create a getter function for this, which is named as the same thing. So whatever variable name I give, that will be a getter function. So I can just call that function to return this value. So that way I can not, I can ignore this uh, get name function, right? So this is how Solidity works. We could have changed this to uh, uint, right? Sorry, uh, uint. And then the thing is that it's it will break basically. It's it's first of all this is a string. Second of all, like uh, it's it's named incorrectly. We should name this something as data, right? And then we should name we should initialize this to something like one. But now the set name function takes a string and tries to assign it to now this doesn't exit. So if I compile this, it will throw a bunch of random errors. Let me just run that because we are doing something that's incorrect, right? So this is the advantage with statically typed uh, languages. It knows everything. It knows that there's a variable called data. There's no variable called name and the data type is different. So if I use this data and I, if I set this data here, right? So I'm passing a string and setting it to data, which is an integer, it will throw an error. So see, now, um, look, now type string memory is not convertible to uint256. So what happened is here, this is a uint number, uint256 by default, but I'm passing a string name and I'm setting it to uh, data and I cannot do that. So this is the reason why this compilation has failed. I haven't even tried to test it because first of all, to test it, we need to compile it, right? Compiler at compile time will detect the type errors and will not let you compile buggy code. Or I mean, bugs are still possible, but it will not let you compile code that is incorrect, right? So uh, this is the advantage of statically typed language. All right, so that's it for Solidity 101. I hope you learned something in this uh, video. And so basically you need to learn Solidity, right? So read the documentation is what I would suggest. And if you just re replicate what I just did in this video, you will understand and you might run into other errors. So you can Google them and try to figure out how it works. But overall, you can uh, read through the documentation, at least like glance through most of the things. The core things are very important. And after this, we can actually go to start writing our contract, which will have tweets and maybe users and we can allow them to sign up and we will basically register sign up in this blockchain world means that we will register their Ethereum address and we'll associate it to their username, which is their Twitter handle, for example, right? We can set that up. So we'll do all of that in the contract. And then after that, we will let that user write tweets. And then those tweets will be addressed to that user's username. So tweet will be another data structure. And so we can start writing tweets and something else. Uh, I mean, later on, if we want, we can also make a feature where you can, if you like someone's tweet, you can pay them some ETH. You can give them some tribute instead of liking. We can also include likes, but I think tribute is better. So if you like someone's tweet, you can give them one ETH or something like this. So we'll implement all of that in our contract in the next video. So, all right. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you liked this one. If it was helpful, please smash the like button. Leave a comment down below if you have any other questions. You can also reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I'll leave my links in the description and on the screen. So yeah, looking forward to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.